are entering parrot space. Tickets, please. Show your passports. Get a bloody move on. Give us a nut. Give us a nut. Give us a bloody pistachio. Adventure game. Solve a riddle, great and small. Adventure game. Adventure game. Hello there, fellow adventurers! I might not be talking about this game if it wasn't for T the Writer, who kept going on at me about it until I finally agreed to give it a go. I'd love to see a review of the Starship Titanic. Still looking forward to your review of Starship Titanic. Great video. I loved it. P.S. Starship Titanic review, please. Still looking forward to your Starship Titanic review. <laughs> Happy 50th episode, Adventure Game Geek. P.S. Starship Titanic? All right, all right, I'll do it already, gosh. This game was written and designed by Douglas Adams, who's most well known for the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which I tried reading once but wasn't really my cup of tea. For heaven's sake, get on with it! Oh, go on, don't just sit there! Sorry Douglas Adams, let's get on with it, shall we? In order to play the game within the game, we have to insert the game disc into the CD drive, which is very meta, just like in Companions of Xanth. Hi, I'm Grundy Gollum. Welcome to the game. What's that noise? Oh, well that was unexpected, wasn't it? I'd forgotten what I was going to say. Oh yes, my name is Fintable. I am the doorbot serving on this the maiden voyage of the Starship Titanic, the ship that cannot possibly, uh, go wrong. Hmm, well it seems like it possibly did go wrong. So the doorbot ushers us into the Starship and explains that the ship's operating system has been sabotaged, which is causing everything on board to malfunction, and they need our help to get things back to normal. Sounds like a job for a geek. An adventure game geek. We soon find out there are other bots aboard, like the desk bot, who gives us a warm robotic welcome. Welcome, guest number, uh, one, to the most glamorous galactic cruise ship experience in the whole of the space-time continuum, the Starship Titanic, the ship that cannot possibly go wrong. Uh, well, I think we already know that it really did go wrong. Our first challenge is to find our way to our room, but the bellbot isn't much help. Hi, I'm Craig. I'm your bellbot today. Hey, I see you're not carrying any luggage. That's great. I can take a little time off right away. And I see your super galactic traveler class, so I guess you can find your own way to your room. <laughs> the door's over there. The elevator's around someplace. Relax, stay cool, enjoy. I guess Super Galactic Traveler class isn't as fancy as it sounds. Now we have free reign to explore the ship, though being a lowly class passenger we don't have access to some locations. I'd recommend finding the room before wandering around too much. You might just get distracted. Ah, call this a bleeding maiden voyage? More like a bleeding disaster if you ask me! Yep, things are going very, very wrong on this ship. We'll have more than enough to do with that parrot later. For now, let's take a trip on one of the elevators, courtesy of the lift bot. Hello, sir. Nice day for vertical transportation, although between ourselves, I'd rather be trotting up the Harkabinja Ubly in my Panama hat, heading for the rebel headquarters with a grenade under my kitchen. Eh? This bot is next soldier called Nobby, and we can read more about him in the in-flight magazine that came with the game box. There's a lot of articles and ads in here that contribute to world building, though it's not so helpful with puzzle solving as we'll find out soon enough. So here we are on our floor, now where's our room? Nope, that's not it. 
Guess not. Is it just me or do all these rooms look the same? Congratulations! You may have already won an upgrade. Please turn to channel 3 for details. Okay, this must be it. Let's chill out in front of the TV and claim that upgrade. If we can figure out this Rubik's Cube of a room, let's try summoning one of the bots for help. Hmm, no help there. Hang on, what about the T-Bot? T-Bot, at your service. Hey T-Bot, I'm having trouble figuring out how my room works. What are all these gadgets? Extend enough furniture to open the bed, then your TV will be available. Cheers, T-Bot! After all that trouble, there's not a whole lot to watch on TV, but we can get that free upgrade to second class by operating what's called the Succubus. You want suck? I suck. You want blow? I blow. I could make a dirty joke here, but this is supposed to be a family-friendly channel, so let's just say that the Succubus takes care of all- <laughs> So let's just say that the succubus takes care of all your sucking and blowing needs. I feel rotten, I do. So you deposit an item into the succubus and then tell it where to send it by using these patterns which you can see around all the different locations. Then it sucks it up and vomits it out the other end. That thing you sent, it's here. <laughs> I thought this was a really inventive, if disgusting, way of sending stuff. Imagine having these instead of post boxes. Time to face the parrot once again. Look, I told you about that! That's my perch, and I'm standing on it! You're trying to deprive a poor parrot of his only means of support! You might recognize the voice as Terry Jones, one of the members of Monty Python and author of the accompanying Starship Titanic novel, which he apparently wrote in the nude. Prodding! I said no prodding! You think I'm some kind of barnacle goose you can prod? You think I'm some kind of bay breasted warbler to make free with? You think I'm some kind of black bellied plumber you can push off his perch? What a racket! This parrot sucks! What a racket! This parrot sucks! Sucks. Sucks. Hey, that gives me an idea! Stop it! I shall screech! I shall screech! screech! I suck! You want blow? Screech! I blow! Alright, here you go. Suck this parrot for me, please. Alright, here you go. Suck this parrot for me, please. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> this sucks and blows the parrot into your new second class quarters. <laughs> the parrot scoffs down this bowl of its favourite pistachios, which turns out to be one of the pieces of Titania, the ship's central intelligence. So that's one down, who knows how many to go. Now that we're second class, we can travel around in what's called the Pellerator. Kindly enjoy the view, please. View? What view? First stop is the bar, where we're formally greeted by the barman. Fortilian Bantoburn Operfluous at your service. Welcome to the Starship Titanic Bar of hey, Bars. Hey, I'm getting oh, bored with my feet. Got anything that'll knock them from under me? Would you shut up, you bloody parrot? I'm trying to listen to the barman here. Behind the bar is another piece of Titania. To get it, we have to find all the ingredients for a special drink called the Titanic Titillator. Sounds... titillating. So, let's see, we need vodka, lemon juice, a crushed TV set, and one pureed flock of starlings? Where are we gonna get something like that? Damn, that's fucked up.
Don't worry though, in the end credits it says that no starlings were harmed during the making of this game. Let's take another trip on the Pellerator. Please stand up straight. Here we are in the music room where we can listen to a performance by the bot band Boppy Headcase and his laid back loafers. That doesn't sound right at all. We must have to adjust these settings, but I can't find any clue to the solution. Time to summon T Bot again. You rang? Hey T Bot, I can't figure out this music puzzle. Could you chime in with a hint, please? Get it? Chime in? Um, well anyway, what's the solution? The solution to this puzzle is not in the game. 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 You'll find it on the back of the box. Oh, sneaky. It's possible to talk to the other bots and ask them questions using the text parser interface, which is part of our pet or personal electronic thing. In other words, the user interface. This was a novel concept to combine the text parser with point and click interaction, but in practice I found it awkward to use and couldn't figure out what commands to type to get the bots to help me. How this? How that? How's your father? How now, brown cow? How should I know? Hey, Bob! I'm getting pulled with Would you face. shut up, you bloody parrot? Would you shut up, you bloody parrot? No, you shut up. You shut up. You shut up. You shut up. Shut up. You shut up. You shut up. These dials on the left-hand side show how each bot is functioning, and there's a room with sculptures that you can adjust which change how they function, though I didn't really understand how this works either. If the despot is in a good enough mood, she'll upgrade us again to first class. Now we have the luxury of taking a relaxing gondola ride, or visiting the first class restaurant. No stupid grinning, please. Unfortunately, all the tables are apparently busy. That table is busy, Sir Dam. That table also is busy. That is an exceptionally busy table, Sir Dam. The maitre d bot seems to have suffered some terrible mishap but he's still got a lot of fight left in him. Take that, that, and that! And this also! There's only one thing to do when fighting a disgruntled and dismembered Maitre D-Bot. That's right, poke him in the Achilles buttock. Ah, you brought me on my Achilles buttock. This you must not do. It pains me very much. Strangely, this is my favorite part of the game and feels very Monty Python-esque. Ah, you think to prod me on my Achilles heel? You think wrong, my fan friend. I fight with renewed vigor. Look, you stupid bastard, you've got no arms left. Yes, I have. Look, it's just a flesh wound. On the whole, though, this game was honestly a very frustrating experience for me, and the constant backtracking and obscure puzzles really started to drive me mental, so I admit that I eventually resorted to using a walkthrough. Well, you've been warned. You're here because you want to be, aren't you? because you want the shortcuts. You want things the easy way, the way that doesn't involve hard work. You're a slacker, aren't you? A good-for-nothing sluggard. An idling, slouching, parasitic bum. It doesn't matter to you that tens, hundreds, no thousands of people have spent millions of man and woman hours painstakingly crafting this fine and complex game. Oh no, you're happy to ride roughshod over their feelings. You spit on their dedication. Never mind the passion, the commitment, the sacrifices they made to ensure the puzzles worked. You don't give a damn. It's just a game to you, isn't it? Wow, I think I just got served. There's some interesting backstory about the ship's creator, Leovinus, who looks suspiciously like Douglas Adams, and what happened to make this ship that can't possibly go wrong, go wrong. Hmm, what's this? Push button to disarm bomb? I didn't know the bomb was armed. I guess we should disarm it then. The Mega Scuttler is now armed and preparing to explode. This will be a fairly big explosion, so please stand back about 22 miles. Wait, hang on, I meant disarm, not arm. 
I don't like being touched. Thank you. It bothers me. Recommencing countdown. Now, 1,000. I swear that voice sounds just like John Cleese, but in the credits, the bomb is listed as Kim Bread, which is actually a pseudonym for John Cleese for reasons that I guess only he really understands. And now for something completely different. 984. It couldn't be a bomb. 983. It would be counting. 982. It's a bomb. It's a bomb. It's a bomb. It's a bomb. Shut up, you bloody parrot. I'm trying to think. Shut up, you bloody parrot. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. 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 Let's summon the trusty T-Bot again. What is it this time? T-Bot, how do I disarm... I mean, arm... I mean, stop this bloody bomb. Listen to everything that the bomb is saying. Eventually, it will drop the password. And remember, nobody likes a smartass. Smartass? Well, that's me done. Closing down countdown secrets. Disarming. Have a nice life. Phew, after all that, I think I need to go to the Super Galactic Leisure Lounge to relax. What happens when we click on this painting? This isn't relaxing, this is pissing me off! Right, that's it, I'm getting off this bloody ship. Once we've collected all of Titania's missing parts, we're finally ready to go home. Well, well, off you go then. I'd say it's been nice knowing you, only it hasn't. Remember the parrot? Remember the parrot? Remember the real McCall? I thank you! I thank you! What? Yep, how can I forget the parrot? Well, there you go. I survived Starship Titanic. So what do you... <laughs> so what do you think, T, now that I finally played it? I was never able to beat this game as a kid, so I wanted you to take a look at it and see if it was even possible. With all the moon logic, easter eggs, and everything else, it can be a little overwhelming for a kid or for anybody who hasn't played adventure games before. So I had to find a veteran like yourself to find some closure. Thanks for doing this review. Cheery bar then, Buster. Missing you already, I don't think. Ha ha! Squawk!